I want to welcome the NDC for choosing to have its, her Thanksgiving service in the Perez Dome. Being one of the two major political parties in this country, they could have chosen to have the service in a lot of places. I want to congratulate them for their contribution to our democracy in this fourth republic. Another feather in your cap is your party's support for the sexuality bill in parliament, with one of its spokespersons being my own son and an elder in the person of Honorable Elder Sam Nate George. But in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, the Bible says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dis desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. You've just come out of your elections. You have one or two more internal elections. Now, it is said in politics that there are three sets of people you meet along the path. Those who openly and passionately support you and those who are openly and passionately against you and those who may mean well but neither defend nor attack you. They may even avoid being associated with you. They love you from afar. Unless you have come to the end of your political career or journey, Politicians must learn to cultivate the second group of people rather than antagonize them, those who are against you. That is the only way to reduce resistance into the future and build a bigger support base. Internal elections may be tough and rough with uncharitable attacks and sometimes targeted lies, but the victor must be magnanimous and reach out because if internal unity is compromised, then the purpose of victory becomes empty and unproductive. As elected leaders, you have a responsibility to embrace all, irrespective of their disposition towards your election. The mantle of leadership requires you to reach out and close ranks, even with your competitors. As a public institution, political parties and the public rightly, you know, political parties are public institutions and the public rightly have interest in what happens internally. So your public conduct and statements reflect the kind of government you are in waiting for or would be when you are entrusted with power. Because in opposition, you are a government in waiting. While as a church we cannot prescribe to you what to say or what not to say, it is always important to appreciate the Ghanaian culture of decorum and circumspection and being cautious of the unintended effects and meanings of your public pronouncements. Also, the public is concerned with the financial inducements and how money has replaced conscience in politics. It's obvious the greatest enemy of this nation is corruption. But looking at the way political parties fund their activities and campaigns, our view is that we are not going to fight corruption anytime soon. Those political business people who fund politicians end up hijacking the wealth of their nations. Politicians help, politicians help us to fight this because our nation is sinking too fast and we cannot continue in this direction. Those of you who gain political power must also not use it as a means to amass wealth for yourselves and your loved ones. You must exercise the perception and you must exercise the perception that Ghanaian politicians go into office to steal from the public purse and not to do service to the nation. As agents of development, political parties must make sure they implement sound social and economic policies to improve upon the living conditions of citizens. Currently, our economy is facing many challenges for reasons best known to all. Ghanaians would like to see a paradigm shift 
which can impact the economy and lives. Whether we like it or not, it's one political party or the other that will lead to achieve this. It is therefore very imperative for parties seeking to be in government to also espouse your sound policy alternatives on national issues that will give hope to the people. It must not be criticism for criticism's sake, but constructive criticism that leads to our collective benefit as a nation. <clears throat> Ghanaians will be looking forward to a healthy balance between patronage and meritocracy as the challenges of economic management get tougher. This would also require a useful blend between the old and the young to give hope and assurance that we appreciate the magnitude of public expectations. Maintaining national peace and unity. Without peace and tranquility, countries struggle to develop and citizens become despondent. Political parties play major roles in maintaining peace or otherwise of countries including Ghana. As we move into major campaign activities towards the 2024 elections, all parties must endeavor to maintain the peace of the country. No matter the circumstances we find ourselves, we can elect our leaders through the ballot and not the bullet. I, I thought that's a good place to clap. <laughs> I use this opportunity to reiterate my call to our security forces when I spoke at their annual Thanksgiving service to be, remain faithful to their oath of protecting our nation from all aggressors and not becoming the aggressors. The NDC, as the party that ushered the Fourth Republic dispensation, also has a duty to ensure your conduct protects this democracy which turned 30 years just yesterday. The Electoral Commission, the Electoral Commission to do all, should do all in their power to diffuse the tension using the IPAC. It's only they who can do that. The IPAC in the past has been a good forum that has helped. It shouldn't be destroyed. The EC should work to bring its stakeholders together for the peace and good of the nation and not divide them. The dealings of the EC should be so transparent that winners will be acknowledged by all and losers will be seen by all to have lost. <clears throat> Research-based decisions and promises. Political parties must steer more towards research-based decisions and choices if they want to carry the people along. Let's be mindful that decisions based on narrow group interest often causes gross disaffection and internal apathy. As we get closer to the next elections, we don't need fanciful, unrealistic, and ill-researched promises just aimed at winning power. I want to congratulate Mr. Chairman and Mr. General Secretary and all your elected executives of the party present here and outside and wish you a successful tenure of office. Amen. Can we, with a mighty clap offering, welcome popularly known as General Mosquito, the national chairman of the National Democratic Congress, to come up stage, to come up stage to bring us a word of greeting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
on behalf of the National Democratic Congress, and on my own behalf, I wish to express our sincerest thanks to Bishop for a very insightful sermon and an equally insightful statement after the sermon. Why are we here? We are here for a very simple exercise, but very important exercise. NDC over the past year, 2022, have gone through a very difficult but intensive series of elections. Within a year, we have elected over 400,000 party executives from branches to national level. And we did this by holding more than 40,000, in fact, 47,000 elections from branches to constituencies, to regional, and then to national. Before we embarked on this difficult journey, we saw the face of God and prayed that God would take us through so that in the end we will have a party solid as we began. We are here because the Lord has taken us through. And in all these processes, we did not suffer any significant accident that caused any life or injuries. And so, at the end of the exercise, we did not have any option than to go back and thank the Lord for what he has done to us. We are not done yet. We have another set of 277 elections to go. We are going to elect candidates for all 275 plus one constituencies and also elect the flag bearer who will lead the party into the 2024 contest. But we think that if you thank the Lord, he will shower more blessings so that he will see you through the next phase. And so we found it compelling to come and thank the Lord for how far he has brought the National Democratic Congress. I heard Bishop asking how we came by the choice of Perez. Ask Bishop asking how we came by the choice of Perez Chapel International. You know, Archbishop, NDC has a lot of very good boys and girls and very bad boys and girls. <laughs> so whilst we were looking around, we realized that there was a particular church that has picked one of our bad boys and converted him into an elder. <laughs> so, we knew that as Perez Chapel International, everything is possible. 
<laughs> that was one of the considerations. The other consideration was that the nation is in crisis. And when the nation gets into crisis, we need courageous, fearless men of God who speak up. So we looked around and we realized that there is this archbishop who admonishes NDC strongly when he considers that we have done something wrong. And he doesn't end there. When he considers that other people have also done something wrong, he speaks up. And so he said that if for nothing at all, maybe there are many ways we have gone wrong. So let's go and see how the auditor will mark us. <laughs> so that is why we are here. Archbishop, we are very, very thankful for your prayers and for your courage and truthfulness to stand up and speak for the nation and not for any sectional interest. We want to continue to plead with the Archbishop and the congregation to continue praying for us so we can get through the next phase of the exercise. And to pray again, not for NDC to come to power, but pray for this country so that we get the government that we need. God has given us choices, so we have control over what we choose. But our choices come along with consequences. God has not given us the power to determine the consequences of our bad choices. So, there are times where you make a bad choice, you must suffer the bad consequences. And that is where you get, people say you get the government you deserve. We are praying that the Lord will give Ghana the government that we need and not the government that we deserve because of our wrong choices. I thank you very much and may God bless us all. On behalf of the party, we present a token of 20,000 Ghana cities to, to the church as thanksgiving to the Lord for how far he has brought us. Thank you very much, and may God bless us. Thank you very much. Amen. Put your hands together for General Mosquito. <laughs> Stretch for, church, will you please stand? Stretch forth your hands towards us on the platform. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we commit Honorable Esiedun Ketia, Honorable Fifi Kwete, and the rest of the executives into your hands. We commit the party NDC, even as they prepare for the next phase of elections. We pray that let there be no accidents nor incidents. We pray that your counsel concerning them, that alone shall stand. We pray they will come out and come up with the people 
that this nation needs to serve in their various capacities in Jesus' name. We pray that you will knit them together, cause them to be a force to reckon with, and continually use them. You said this year is a year of your faithfulness. Let it show in their going out and their coming in. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Congrats. 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 Hey, honorable, long time ago. Congrats. 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 Congratulations. 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 Yes. So you can please. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Put your hands together for them. Our 